I'm Travis with CP Mobile RV Repair. In this video, we're going to cover RV inverters, specifically this Xantrex X2000 inverter with a built-in transfer switch. Xantrex is not a sponsor for this video. I just like their products, and I will have a link below if you would like to purchase one. I have some specific things I look for in an RV inverter. It has to be high quality and reliable. I have to be able to easily adjust settings, which can be done through the Xantrex app if you have the optional Bluetooth remote panel and I have to be able to easily read information about what the inverter is doing in real time. This line of Xantrex inverters checks all those boxes for me. Now I'm going to quickly install this inverter on our display board and show you how the power flow works with a single breaker inverter. I've installed some plugs to make this install easy. Okay, if you watched the previous video, which we covered power flow of an RV electrical system, and in a system without an inverter, none of these 120 volt outlets have power unless we're plugged into a generator or shore power. An inverter enables us to take 12 volt power from the batteries and turn it into 120 volt power so we can use a variety of appliances such as a coffee maker, vacuum, blender, or any other household appliance as long as the inverter has enough output to run it. In this case, we're using a 2000 watt inverter, which I like for this application because 2000 watts works out to about 16 amps and our circuit breaker is rated for 15 amps on this circuit, meaning we can run just about anything from this inverter that we can plug into a standard 15 amp outlet you would find in your house. We can also adjust the maximum output on this inverter to 15 amps at 120 volts to keep everything at that 15 amp rating. Now let's cover how this inverter works. Once we have it installed and connected to our batteries, we can simply turn it on, give it a few seconds to boot up, and now we can take 12 volt power from our batteries through these big battery cables to the inverter where it gets turned into 120 volt AC power and out to our outlets. It's important to note that in these systems, 120 volt power only flows in one direction, from left to right in this case. So this inverter will not backfeed the power distribution box, which can be dangerous. It has separate 120 volt in and 120 volt out terminals in this wiring bay. So if we look at these plugs that have little lights on them, we can see our input side is not lit up and our output side is. So we are not back feeding our power distribution box, which we should not be doing. It's also important to note that we're not providing power to our converter. We can see that this light where our converter is plugged in is not on at the moment. If we use an inverter, and power our converter, we end up with a power loop which unnecessarily drains our batteries. Now, if we plug our system back into shore power, we can see the automatic transfer switch function of the inverter come into play. Now we have power coming in from the shore power inlet through the power distribution to all of the breakers. And when the inverter detects that we have power coming in from another source, it simply allows that power to flow through it or to bypass the inverter and go to the outlets. On the display, it now says bypass on our inverter, meaning power is simply flowing through it and the inverter is not taking 12 volt power and turning it into 120 volt power, simply a bypass. That's it for this inverter and this type of installation. It's fairly simple when set up and installed properly and it functions well, the only drawback being that we only have power to a single circuit and the corresponding outlets. So when we're unplugged, <clears throat> in this case, our microwave doesn't work if we were plugged in here to our microwave and the outlets that have power will typically be in the kitchen or bathroom. So we could run a coffee maker from the kitchen, but our TVs would likely be on a separate outlet and we wouldn't be able to run those from the inverter. You do have the option of picking any circuit though. There can be many other ways to install inverters and get more circuits powered by them. But in my opinion, this is the best practice for installing this type of inverter, which I call a single breaker inverter installation. In the next video, we will cover how to power the entire RV with an inverter charger setup. So hit subscribe if you'd like to see that video. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.